All right, welcome back for the second part of One Man's Faith today. In just a minute, we're going to turn to our series that we've been talking about on the anointing, but I, I want to cover the Passover just a little bit more because we do need to understand it because we are going to be celebrating it. All right, you see, Jesus did not turn, or God did not turn Gentile. All right, just because Jesus, Jesus died and was resurrected and it's been 2,000 years, God did not become Gentile. God is still God, and believe it or not, we can say He's Jewish, okay? He's the one that put all of this together. He's the one that called the Jewish people to be His people. He's the one that, in a sense, developed the Hebrew language. And the Hebrew language is backwards from the Gentile languages. And I think, you know... If I can say this, I think God's left-handed in a sense because He's the one that, you know, it goes this way, you know, backwards. We normally write like this, you know, but the Hebrew language, it goes that way. And God presented that to them. And it appears that that's kind of His language. Okay? So we're not going to walk into a Gentile millennium. We're going to walk into a Hebraic millennium, so to speak. God did not do away with the Jewish nation. God did not throw them away. God did not forget them. They are still His people. As a matter of fact, the end times, Revelation all really is about bringing the Jewish people back to him. God has not forsaken them. And we need to understand that. And, and it helps to understand the concepts here. Because, because this is the way God set things up. I even believe the end time, you see, we're looking at the end times now, and people are saying, oh, he's coming soon, he's coming soon. Well, I'm not totally sure on that. Because there are things that still have to happen that we, that we a lot of times don't even consider. So I don't want to get into that, but I'm just, I'm just saying that, that, that everything really revolves around being Hebraic, not about Gentile. All right? We unfortunately look at revelations from a Gentile mindset and we're missing things. We're missing things. But Passover, <laughs> let me get back. I could go off on these things. Passover. Passover starts with a lamb, and Jesus is and became that Passover lamb. He was unblemished, he was sinless, and he died for you and me so that death would pass over us. You see, when, when you accept Jesus as Lord, you have the blood posted on your lentils and y your, door, your door frames and your lentils within your heart, and you no longer die a tragic and, and go to a tragic death. In other words, hell. The angel of death passes over you. You're transferred to the kingdom. You will be in heaven. You will not even have to face hell. You will not even face death. Death is just the body dying. Okay? For those that don't know Jesus, for those who have not accepted Jesus, you're going you're gonna to die and be transferred to hell. There being there will be no little area to wait. You either go. We're either going to go to heaven or we're going to go to hell. And so, Jesus being the Passover Lamb means that death passes over us. Our spirits go to be with the Lord while our bodies are in the ground, but. At a certain instance, at a certain time, a specific time, with a trumpet blast, 
all that are dead will rise first, and then those that are alive will rise right after or with them. In other words, our bodies will be resurrected just as Jesus' body was resurrected. He became the first fruit. He became the first to be resurrected, and that's what first fruits is about. Unleavened bread is about, is about staying sinless, unleavened. Leaven a lot of times means sin in the Bible. It says that, that the lamb was roasted by fire. Jesus went to hell when he died to set free the captives. But he went to hell, roasted by fire. See, there's a lot of symbology here about Passover. And so it helps to see what the service is about. Passover, Passover is a meal. They ate it in haste. They were to roast the lamb by fire and, and use unleavened bread and bitter herbs to show their, uh, their slavery. Okay? When we ce celebrate Passover today, we normally don't use a lamb because um, the ordinances given were that, were that the lambs had to be sanctified first. By, by the priesthood going to the temple. There is no temple. So we normally, in most places, use, uh, uh, use chicken, for instance. That's, that's going to be the meat of the day for our Passover celebration. So you, we have a meal. Uh, now, we have a little bit better meal than they had. It, it, it almost appears like there was just lamb, bitter herbs, and, you know, and unleavened bread. You know, unleavened bread is uh, pita bread, is unleavened bread. Uh, it's, you know, it's a flat bread. You know, it, it doesn't have that yeasty taste that we all really like in, in, our, in our dinner rolls and all. So uh, we have a little bit better uh, uh, dinner than they had. They were to eat it like they were getting ready to leave at any second. See, they didn't know when the angel of death was going to appear. They didn't know when Pharaoh was going to run out and yell at him and tell him to get out of his nation. So they had to be ready for it. Uh, and and that's, what, that's, 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 why, that's why it says here in chapter 12 that you're to gird your loins and sandals on your feet and your staff in your hands, man, ready to run when I tell you to. Okay? Uh, and so God says this is going to be a permanent ordinance, something that we will all celebrate together when when the Jewish nation is redeemed back and comes to know who their, their true Messiah is, the one that they rejected. And so that's coming. That's coming. They're going to eventually start to see who Jesus really was, who he really is today, and they are going to come back to him. And Passover is one of those ordinances. As a matter of fact, Ezekiel tells us that the nations that do not celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles will not have rain that year. So there are several of these that are um, going to be celebrated uh, maybe forever. You know, it says, it says it's a forever ordinance, so it could be forever and ever and ever and ever that we celebrate it. What we do know is that it, if tabernacles has to be celebrated during, during the millennium, then I believe Passover will also be celebrated since it is also a permanent ordinance. And so those three go together. Passover, the next day starts the Feast of Unleavened Bread, 
And then after the first uh, Sabbath, the feast of uh, the feast of first fruits, those three Jesus has fulfilled. Okay, he has already fulfilled those. The ones that are still to come, and we'll talk and we'll talk more about this in uh, September, October, are the last three: the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, so those those are coming. All right, now. Before we go to break, let's 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 jump over into our series that we've been doing on uh, on the anointing and turn to Luke chapter four. That's our um, uh, kind of theme verse. Luke chapter four, um, and the anointing. What is the anointing about? So so let's do a little bit of review here and let's read. 17 through 19 here be, be, before we go to break. And the books of the prophet Isaiah were handed to Jesus. And he opened the book and found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set free those who are oppressed to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And then it says he handed the book back and he looked at the people and he said, today this has been fulfilled in your sight in, or, or in your hearing. Caused a big tumult. But what Jesus was quoting from, he was handed the book of Isaiah. This is Isaiah 61 where it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Anoint, the anointing is when the Spirit comes upon you. Now, we, it's a process. It's a process that happens. It, it, it starts with and, and deals with what we call being baptized in the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit or the Spirit coming upon. They're, they're all synonymous phrases and deal with the anointing, the Holy Spirit coming over and coming down upon you. Okay, go ahead and get a cup of coffee because it's time for a break again and I'll be right back. 